What's going on, everybody? Uh, tonight, we are not doing the typical intro that we normally do, where it's like, it's the only podcast with uh, two former Major League Baseball stars and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Pete, myself, we wanted to take a few minutes just to say thank you. Uh, there's a ton of new people here from a bunch of podcasts that we have done with guests, and we just wanted to kind of do a state of the union where we are here with the wrestling perspective and slowly kind of reintroduce everybody to who the new hosts were because not a lot of people know, but Pete and I, we started the wrestling perspective many years ago. Pete, by the way, Petey Williams. Hi. How's she going, eh? There, sorry about that. I didn't mean for it to take eight minutes into the podcast to get to that, but I... So this whole podcast is just kind of us saying thank you to the fans. You know, we stopped doing the podcast kind of abruptly. Um, life got in the way back in the day. Uh, PD retired from wrestling. I, I, I kind of took a mental break. Then I started doing it with James Ellsworth, and something happened there. And then I started doing it with uh, <clears throat> L.A. Knight. What the? Wow. Those that don't know her up to date, Eli Drake's new name. Yes, as he just said with NXT. But Eli and I did a pod, did the wrestling perspective for a while. And then I stopped doing podcasts. I was burnt out. I'm doing a quick overview, by the way, of how we got to here. Um, then you were still, and I kind of would check in, like, Pete, you ready to do it? And you're like, no, nah, no. Nah. And which, you know, life, it sucked. And and then I hit a bit of it because I started to go through a divorce in the middle of doing the wrestling with sports. And I checked out. I didn't, I mean, I wouldn't show up for months. And I'm the guy that hits record. So <laughs> it, it, it sucked. And, you know, what you and I kind of built fell apart, unfortunately, due to that kind of stuff. And then uh, we ba- kind of had to destroy the old feed because of we had someone that was uh, – uh, burnt in this uh, speak out movement. We felt like in, he was kind of one of those four forefathers of that movement, as horrible as that sounds. And we, uh, at the time, it was me, Jason Kindle, and uh, Dimitri Young, felt like it's just better to destroy the feed, which I kind of regret now in hindsight, and start over on a new feed, which we lost all those fans, all those loyal fans. And you know, there's there's a couple fans we still owe, owe autograph pictures to, and don't forget we didn't we haven't forgot. We know we still owe some autograph pictures, and we'll get them out when there's not a world changing pandemic, and we're all not afraid to go outside, which some of us are still kind of are. But we didn't forget. Anyways, uh, we we burnt it. We started a new feed with wrestling with sports, and then you kind of started to kind of get that itch to come back to the podcast. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I pretty much took uh, all of 2020 off. I mean, let's face it. 2020 was <laughs> a bad year, probably the worst year of all of our lives. Um, yeah. And then off. what's that? 2019 as well. No, no, no. Uh, 20, uh, uh, the end of 2019 is when we kind of, stopped was it? doing it yeah i believe so uh, if memory serves me correctly so um because hmm. I, I was still kind of doing it and then i was still wrestling and I, I wrestled like a couple of matches in 2020 at the beginning before the pandemic and then that was it and you know during you know covid when it started last february march you know that <laughs> that's where you're asking like hey you want to come back want to come back and i'm like no 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 just a, a, a good, nice break from wrestling. Not that I needed it, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if my heart was there or whatever the case was. And uh, yeah, and I, I saw what you were doing with the wrestling with sports. Loved it. Um, you were the only one, by the way. Oh. Because oh. <laughs> I didn't like it. I'm sure Dimitri and Jason loved oh, it. Too. They loved it. And I loved who I was working with, but it wasn't uh, the wrestling perspective. And that's kind of where my heart was. I, and we're speaking candidly here, by the way. Yeah. And it's, so then it was, uh, I don't know, uh, right, right around. It was getting really close to me coming back. Uh, I remember we watched like maybe the first talk and shop a mania uh, back in. I don't know if that was like the summer or November or something. I, I can't remember September. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, we met up with, uh, you know, now our, one of our co-hosts, Darren McCarty, and he he was really egging me on to come back. And he he knew I was going to, he knew I was going to, he just didn't know when. Um, We all kind of did. And you had said, look, I'm close, but I'm not there yet. Yeah. I said, just let me, let let me do what I got to do. And then we'll, we'll do it. And then, yeah, I think we recorded like, I don't know if it was like a couple of days before Christmas or right after Christmas, it was myself, you and Dimitri. And uh, yeah, that was the game changer right there. I, and then I just knew like at that point I said, I, I know I'm going back to impact in January. Uh, but like, it was just like, let's go back all in all wrestling stuff, whether it podcast or wrestling or producing, let's do it. Um, and I, I like doing both at the same time because my, my head's in it when I'm around wrestling. Um, and then my head's not in it when I have to watch it from afar. It's, it's kind of, even though we did it back in like 2000 and whatever, like four or five years ago, I wasn't in the business, but we still talked about it and I viewed it from a different perspective. I didn't think I would ever come back to wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, and but then I did. I mean, that that's part of the reason why I went back to wrestling. We talk about it every single week and it's, you kind of have that itch and you bugging me every single week, day, whatever hour. Hey, you coming back, you coming back. I mean, it does give you the itch. So, I mean, you were right, Dennis, you, you said, I'm going to get you back and you, you did. Um, but what we got going on now, I mean, I, I think it's a, 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 a huge step from, you know, what we, what we were doing before, I think we built on it, um, you know, pretty big. So a little inside baseball, when we started the wrestling perspective, I'm going to tell, tell, tell some news here, Pete. When we started the wrestling perspective, you watched a little wrestling, but you didn't really watch a lot. So you kind of had one foot in one foot out. And sometimes I just have to text you like, Hey, just so you know, this happened to a raw, just so you know, this happened over here. And you're like, all right, cool. We'll, we'll talk about it and I'll figure it out. And as we started going, you're wrestling. You started actually watching more and more of it. And now here we are doing this podcast. And we, as of late, and here's part of what I wanted to talk about for all the new people who came. We, we've got a lot of fans from our MJF interview, which is just fresh and new and fun, by the way. That was exactly what we wanted that interview to be. <laughs> then we got a lot from the Rocky Romero interview, by the way. Thank you to everybody from New Japan who has come over here, those fans. Anybody who's showing up and listening to the interviews from any of our guests. A, we want to thank you guys for coming and hanging out and subscribing to this new YouTube channel that we've got going on. We do have an audio podcast, so if you're like... I don't want to sit at home and watch you jabronis do a podcast. Wait, like that? I, I brought back a word from the 90s. That That's it? Just a little? Yeah, yeah it's a jabroni, man. I mean, I, I've heard it for the past 20 years. And you know what? You know me. I'm not one of those guys that I, I like to use wrestling lingo. I try to stay away from it because one of my pet peeves is I hate listening to wrestling podcasts. And you're like, ew, it's a work, it's a shoot, these jabronis, let me, t-, you know, and it's like, you guys aren't really, I, I'm not part of the industry. I get to come around it as a guest. I feel like some of those terms and words should be used by the people within the industry, not so much us guys hanging out. Or one of my other pet peeves are if you listen to like the something to wrestle with and you start using their lingo on your podcast, a little bit of stealing maybe, I don't know um <laughs> it's that's me by the way yeah uh, well it's an honor among thieves but i mean that's where we're at right now uh you know thank you to everybody that's listened uh prior to where we're at now and thank you for all the new listeners and viewers and uh you, when we had the podcast before we always said how grateful we are for all the listeners we, we really were, and we try to do our best to interact and uh, make it interactive, the show. Um, and I thought we did a pretty good job. And I, that's something I don't want to let up on. That's we, We've made that a point to still keep it interactive. Um, but where we're going next, I mean, we have a bunch of new co-hosts. 
you know, so, I mean, we want to, let's run them down. We'll get to that here in a second. I do want to say the one thing we don't really do well on the show is promote. Yeah. And, you know, even on the MJF show, we didn't really promote, but just, just quickly, if you're watching this and you're listening, you know, we do have a 24 seven hotline, which I don't know why you guys don't use it, but it's there. If you decide to use it, uh, two, four, eight, four, five, five, six, five, six, five, just call, leave a message, you know, your name, where you're from. And you can leave a topic or a message or a complaint or whatever. And you know, it might get on the air, but it's there if you want it. It's a podcast by the way. So you can pause it and go back. I'm not going to repeat the number. Uh, wrestling perspective at gmail.com is our email address. So if you have something you want us to talk about or a topic or a question for a guest, we'll try to get it on. But we do have those two avenues for you to talk to. We're kind of toying around with an idea of doing maybe a live Zoom show, but that's as our fan base grows because essentially, this is this is as weird as it's going to sound, but. For the longest time, this podcast feed was the Wrestling With Sports, which was kind of a split feed where some people would listen when it was wrestling content. Some people would listen when it was sports content. Half the people would check out and half the people would check in. It was just kind of a hodgepodge and a mess. And we decided to drop the sports and just stick with wrestling. And as since we've done that, the fan base has grown. And once again, another little inside baseball here is we've got two former baseball players. We have a four-time Stanley Cup winner, and we have the lead singer from Rancid. And here at the podcast, we do pride ourselves on being being full comparent, cons, cons, parent, comparency? Transparency. Transparency. Thank you, buddy, uh, with you guys. And it's kind of hard to grow a fan base. Is these guys have their own fan bases, but it's rooted in – sports and music like pete you have a great wrestling fan base right yeah, absolutely i i think so if you decided to do a podcast on macrame how many of those fans do you think would listen uh i i i don't know anybody that's into that really not a lot so yeah. so as awesome as this this group of guys are they have their own separate fan bases that some of them have come to support them just because they support the name and who they are. So it's hard to build a fan base. And that's what we try to do every week. That's why we've been a really guest heavy lately, which we're going to kind of back off of that a little bit. We're going to still try to do one guest a week, one guest every other week. But we're going to get back into what kind of got us to the dance, PD and I, and, and made this podcast a hit is – you know, more topical stuff. So with that kind of stuff, we want you, the fans, to be more involved in, you know, whether you leave a comment on our YouTube page or whether you email us or leave a voicemail, we want you, the fans, to be part of the show. You know, if you want to say hi to Lars or you're a Dimitri Young fan, do it. This is, the you know, we're trying to get back to you, the fans. Absolutely. I mean... If it wasn't for the listeners, the viewers, we wouldn't have a show. Uh, I, well, we, we let's face would. it, we yeah. would. We would just, you know, hang out with each other and stuff like that. And, you know, whoever. I mean, that's pretty much what we do. We've said that since day one. Uh, we're just well, now it's more than two dudes, but we're just two guys talking wrestling. And if you want to come and hang out with us and, you know, listen to us talk wrestling or, you know, call in, shoot a text, uh, whatever, whatever. Twitter, social media, and, and want to hang out with us and interact with us. Yeah, that's, that's, we're all about that. So finally, now let's get to the guest. And I think we should start with the order of people as they've come into our lives. All right. Who came first for you? You. Okay. So everybody knows me next. <laughs> Way to bury the lead. Uh, but there's <laughs> uh, Petey Williams. Let's no. let's start with you, Pete. P.D. Williams, uh, you was in Impact. You're back in Impact. You're a producer, an agent. You sit in the booking team, but you're not really part of the booking team. Um, but you're you're kind of a good hand. Is that was that the right way to use that wrestling term? You're a good hand. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I 
uh, know a lot about the business. Everybody's always still learning in wrestling. Uh, that's what I always like to say. Uh, I've been doing it for over 20 years now. Um, and, you know, I started an impact in 2004. It was like pretty much almost to this date in uh, 2004, February. And what is that? 17 years. And, you know, I, I came in and out of impact and stuff, but impacts always been my home. You know, it's always seems like I always go back to impact and do impact stuff. So you know, I've been around for it so long, for so long. I know what uh, pretty much what the company's all about and what they're looking for and what they're looking to do. And, um, I love wrestling there. Uh, good, good group of, of talent and stuff. I know a lot of people, I, I I don't like to use the word move on from impact, but they, they, they do, whether they go to WWE, Ring of Honor, AEW, wherever the case may be. Um, but industry. yeah, it, it's the industry, but what's always good is that there's always somebody underneath waiting to, for, for their next shot. And you could see the, the building of, uh, the, the wrestlers and the talent and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, that's what I've been doing for the past you know, uh, 17 years, I guess you could say is impact wrestling. And I, I love it more, uh, than ever now. Um, it's when I first started there it was very stressful, stressful in the sense that I'm trying to make a name for myself. You were wrestling for a job essentially every yeah. day. And, uh, we were a up and coming company and stuff like that. And obviously I think at one point impact did hit rock bottom, uh, and then now they're, they're building actually, many times. Yeah. Yeah. Up and ups and downs, but th they went down and up, but they actually did hit rock bottom. And then now I think they're on the upswing again, um, just doing the, the big merger and all that kind of stuff. And then just being a part of that, that's it's, it's incredible. We're going to look back on this in history and be like, wow, remember that, you know, like we were, we revolutionized the business. You, you don't, you don't realize it now because we're actually living it. But when we look back on it, we'll be like, man, those were, those were good times. Um, yep. Yeah. And if I, if I wrestle again, awesome. You know, I'm in probably um, uh, the best shape that I've been in in a very long time. Second best uh, shape. I said in a very long time. Okay. In a very long time. Not, not, I'd say the second best shape. Yeah. In my life, but kind of a muffin top right now. I'm not going to lie to you, buddy. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe so, you knock it in when you're on camera a little bit. I, I think I should, right? Um, coming, <laughs> coming from the chubby guy. I'm trying to get to the heavyweight division. You know? <laughs> so uh, I already done the X division, so maybe now it's a tag. Or, you, you know who I'd like to tag with? How about triple X division? Because you're getting up there in weight, buddy. They already have a, what is it, a triple XL, double XL? That's the tag team. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, that's what I've been doing and you know, I just, just loving it. Can't wait to go back in March. The, so this is by the way, how we talk to each other all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that by the way, and who came next, he's in phenomenal shape, but Jason Kindle came along when it was me and one of the speak out guys, which we kind of said, we'll never say his name on the podcast again. Yeah. Um, and Jason came along. We actually tried to book him as a guest. And Jason was like, nah, I would just I want to do the podcast. So he started doing the show with us. Jason is a wrestling fan, a more WWE and attitude era. Sometimes we bust his balls about it, but that's what he likes. And that's that's the good thing about the wrestling industry is whether you're an AEW guy or impact guy or WWE guy, that's what you like. So uh, we, we, we joke with him all the time, but you know what? At least he stands up and says, look, the product might not be great, but this is what I want to watch. And I, I, and that goes for anybody. So Jason, uh, I, I love him to death. The, the guy I think is, is hilarious. Um, you know, he has that like backhanded, he'll give you like a backhanded compliment, but make it funny in the same way. Um, and the, the guy's, the, the guy's done it all, you know, like, I mean, how, how many times has he been to the all-star game? Like th th three time all-star three time all-star. Uh, he was in the league for like 15 years. He's regarded as one of the top, top, depending on where, who you talk to, one of the top 20 catchers of all time. Uh, probably one of the best hitting catchers of all time. If anything, 
uh, you know, he would always finished kind of second to uh, Mike Piazza in the All Star voting. So you know, he should have been to the All Star game many more times, but he was just one of those guys that was unfortunate to play in an era where there was just one guy always slightly better than you, but he was always one B. Yeah, and I and that's and we look at Jason. People know him. I have you know uh, non wrestling friends i guess that know nothing about wrestling but they're like jason kendall wow i'll 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 listen to your show because i i'm a huge baseball fan and i know jason kendall tell him i said hi or get an autograph or whatever the whatever they say um and the best thing about jason by the way is we have this big gigantic group text thread and jason kendall is the one guy that's always pushing us to do more shows like sometimes we're like Jason, we can only do so many shows a week, but God bless the guy. He loves to talk wrestling. He loves to do the podcast, and I say that not as a knock, but as how much he loves wrestling and loves doing this. Yeah, I, he he's he's a phenomenal guy, and uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about him. I mean, he made me uh, very welcome coming back to the podcast. He wasn't. Nervous. You were, believe it or not, you were nervous to come home. And that's kind of what we call the podcast is coming home because we we already kind of had this established group. And although you were the OG, you were the new guy in this group at the same time. Yeah. I mean, if I had to do it over again, I would have never left. I mean, it always well sucks starting over again and all that kind of stuff. But um it, we're, we're here now and we're going to make it better than ever. And, you know, Jason is also going to be a part of this and no. um, yeah, it's going to be great. Who, who's, who's Dimitri, next? Dimitri Young came around next. Okay. Dimitri is one of those guys, as much as I love Jason, Dimitri is one of those guys that I was always a fan of. Uh, I, I begged and begged and begged him for, to do the podcast. When you and I were doing a podcast, I, I originally wanted Dimitri, and this is before I knew Jason or any of the other any of the, these uh, uh, blah, 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 any of these other guys. So I, you know, it's not a knock to them, but I knew Dimitri from being Facebook for, uh, friends with him. That I I wanted him to be the original third member of our podcast, and he would be thankful, but no thanks. And I, just, you know, I just really want to watch it. And when Jason came aboard, he kind of was like, all right, let me, I'll come on as a guest host one night and I'll dip my toes in it. And I got him hooked the same way I got you hooked. And for the people at home, I was, and I get a lot of emails like, who are you? How do you do this? And we'll get to who I am a little bit later, by the way. But when Jay, when P and I started the podcast, I kept asking him, Hey, let's do a podcast. He's like, no, no, no. And one day I said, just do one episode. And if you like it, do two episodes. And if you like it, do three episodes. And then, you know, I, I almost, I guess, audio catfished him because I knew once he started, he wouldn't stop. And that was kind of how I got uh, Dimitri Young hooked was just come do one. And if you like it, do two. And if you like it, do another one. And he loved it. It was a, it was a great mix. But Dimitri might be one of the smartest people I know who loves wrestling and can tell you stuff from AWA, NWA, you know, WCW. This Dimitri, it might be the quietest guy on the podcast. He sits back. I like to call him the professor, the professor, honestly, because he just kind of sits back and surveys and has thoughtful questions. And it, but he is the biggest geek on the show because he gets so excited when we have some of these guys on and a little behind the scenes. I know Pete, I'm doing all the talking here, but the one thing that really melts my heart and makes having guests worth having guests on isn't when we hit record. It's before when we're all sitting in the zoom and you sit back and you watch all these guys who have been Stanley cup champions and all stars turn into 12 year olds when these wrestlers come on and then watching the wrestlers reciprocate that back and you just kind of sit back and go, this is a great formula right here. 
Yeah. And there's nothing like it. There, there really isn't. And, you know, looking at how I know Dimitri, like before even meeting him, you know, obviously Detroit Tigers, I grew up a Tigers fan, you know, mm-hmm. huge. And, and he played for the Tigers, you know, his credentials, he's got a uh, two-time all-star, right? And then I, I believe he even had a National League uh, Comeback Player of the Year. Yep. Um, so, I mean, it, it, he's a great player as well. And I just, I never thought like, you know, going to, you know, the games and watching it when I was, you know, younger, just starting in the business or whatever, um, that, you know, I'd be sitting here being a co-host with Dimitri Young. Um, and you're right. Like his, his heart for wrestling, Dennis, is uh, in his mind too. Um, because he hasn't been in the business ever, but the way he thinks about it and stuff, it's like, okay, he, he, he gets it. So, and as well, like the first that podcast, first time I met him was the, the day I came back to the podcast, it was, uh, me, you and him and you so excited by the way, Yeah, great show. Right. I mean, I, at least I, I believe it was, it was, um, so yeah. And that's, you know, Dimitri just, you know nice southern dude um and yeah good heart you know he, he's i'd say like he's not the heart eh, yeah we'd call him the heart of the podcast sure yeah that's it i think we would call call him that then came darren mccarty who is a four-time stanley cup champion and uh mostly with the red wings played a year in calgary had a gr- band and grinder who you know, I'm not a Red Wings fan. And this is what makes this good for me was outside of Dimitri and Lars, and we'll get to Lars in a second, I wasn't really fans of all these guys. Like, even you, when I met you, I loved wrestling. I was like, and we first met, I was like, Pete, I, I know who you are, but I wasn't a huge fan. So I didn't really, you know, mark out too much for you. And I think if I was a fanboy, we wouldn't have been friends right off the the bat. Yeah, I mean, possibly not. I mean, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's always me- weird meeting people that you see on TV, uh, mm. and that does bring me to Darren because you know Darren, four time Stanley Cup winner, uh, all four with the Red Wings, right? Right. And you know, and I have to admit that I am also not a Detroit Red Wings fan. Um, you know, being Canadian, I was always a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. And he, uh, Darren's Canadian as well, but, you know, he ended up playing South Little Border. And, but you watched and Detroit. him you lived. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I watched him. I watched him win all his Stanley Cups and stuff and uh, everything he did. And then, you know, when we were chilling at your house that one night, um, watching, I think it was Talk and Shop and Mania, oh. and I, I met him for the first time. I'm like, you know, this is this is pretty cool. And I think we were both – you know, uh, not infatuated with each other, but, but maybe because, you know, we, we were talking business and wrestling in his mind as well, you know, being the he, he's big in the storylines, like super big. He likes to uh, think all the pathways that the storyline is going to go down. And what if this happens? What if this happens? So good, like fantasy booking mind, I would say. Um, and, you know, Darren, uh, again, being from the Detroit area. When you hear the name Darren McCarty, everybody knows who Darren McCarty is. Like everybody, everybody I talk to, they're like, "Yeah, oh yeah, Darren." I watch. Hey, can you get his jersey signed for me and all that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, so Darren is a, another very big part uh, of our podcast as well. Just, I I love the guy. I I can't say a, a lot of nice things about him. And here's here's something: is I I got divorced. I'm starting over in life, right? Uh, I go from a big, beautiful house to a small little apartment, right? And here's this guy, Darren McCarty, four Stanley Cups, wants to come hang out at my small little place that I don't even want to be at. But he doesn't care because he wants to come watch wrestling and hang out with friends. And that really endeared me to him. And once again, the fact that I, I know him as Darren, not Darren McCarty, not a four-time Stanley Cup champion, but as Darren. Like I said, I loved hockey growing up. I loved hockey until about the mid-2000s, and I still watch it and check in here and there now. But when Darren was never my favorite player. The Red Wings were not my favorite team. 
but Darren is one of my favorite people. Is that is that a you know? Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And like I said, uh, Red Wings not my favorite team either. But I met Darren when he was oh man, I he might have been a rookie. I was young. Um, geez, I don't know. Uh, I, don't know, I went with my dad uh, to his hometown in Leamington, Ontario. And uh, there was like, a, I was really big into hockey cards back in like probably 90, 91, 92. And I've only got two hockey players, actual autograph, well, three. Um, but the third one I didn't meet in person, Bob Probert, but uh, two of them. And one of them was Darren. I got him to sign his, uh, man, who did he play for? Belleville in the OHL. I got him to uh, sign his Belleville card, and he was with, uh, I think, Trevor Kidd, too. And I got both their autographs that day, and I loved it. You know, and that's the first time I met Darren. Obviously, Darren doesn't remember, but, you know, showed him the card. He's like, that's awesome. And you know what? He gave me another autograph. Uh, (laughs) I didn't even ask for it, but that's what kind of guy he is. You know, 8 by 10 nice personalized autograph, and that's hanging up for me, and uh, I'll I'll never forget that. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Darren. And here's the fun, best thing, as much as we were, because that was one of the texts. I was like, "Dude, you got to come to this wrestling party. Darren McCarty's going to be here, right?" You show up, and he was a, a, just a huge fan of yours, and he spent all night like, "Petey, tell me about this. Petey, tell me about that." And we we were watching Talk and Shop, and you'd be like, "Oh yeah, I wrestled that guy, or I know that." And like, what? What? And it was. It was awesome to see this guy who has been to the top of the mountain to do the things that he has done just geek out over you. Yeah, it was like Christmas for him. You yeah. know, just just light up. But uh, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm speechless when stuff like that happens because, you know, me, I'm just a dude. Right. That just hangs out and likes wrestling. Darren's the same way going back. Jason's the same way. Dimitri up. Com- Lars is the same way. And that's what brought us all together. It wasn't that if there was no such thing as wrestling, we probably all wouldn't have met, you know, but we all have a common interest and that's, what's really important about this podcast. That was, I think one of the cool things is when you tell a potential guest, Hey, do you want to come on the show? I, in some, listen, it's no secret. Wrestlers don't really want to do wrestling podcasts. Let's not lie to ourselves and pretend that well, there, there's so many of them. Right. Like it's like I'll, I get hit up at least once a day for a wrestling podcast. And if I if I say no, OK, they stop going away. And then I say yes to one. Then they're like, oh, PD did that podcast. And then I'll get five requests the next day and another five and stuff like that. So, I mean, that that's how it goes. It's not that wrestlers don't want to do the podcast. It's just that we, we if we did every podcast, then we would not have time to do anything else in life. Yeah, we re- I, I recently reached out to a wrestler to ask him to do the podcast. He's like, you know, I get asked so many times. I have to charge now. Mm. Uh, it's 100 bucks to do the, for me to do podcasts. And I was like, I'll never pay for an interview. It was it, – by the way, it's not a no-name guy. It was a guy that I think I would love to have on, but I just can't justify it. But it's like 100 bucks. I, I, I got paid to talk to you and promote your stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I would never charge for a podcast. The only um, interview I charged for, I remember back uh, when I, high spots they used to do their shoot videos, and uh, I just got released Stern, by Impact. Right? What's that? Kevin Stern show. I is it? It was okay. Um, you know, and they sit you down on that one chair in their studio and stuff, and then. The you know, shoot the, interviews. Yeah, the shoot interviews. Yeah. And it's like an hour, hour, and however long it was. It might have been the worst shoot interview ever, by the way, because you didn't really shoot I don't, anything. You were just like, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. Oh, yeah, I like them. I like them. And I like, mean, you what, what, tell they you were want getting... me to make up stories and like that aren't true? Like, I, I'm like, I'm sh- this is this is the truth right here. This is what, you know, and you uh, grass back again. Yeah, I mean, it's fine, though, because, I mean, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about people. I mean, life's too short for that. You see all the same people on the way up as you do on the way down in the business. So, um, you know, and I'm not a backstabber type of guy, so I, there's just no need for that. But they paid me. I did it. And they were like, oh, OK. Worst shoot ever, by the way. If you get a chance, Google PD Williams shoot interview. Yeah. 
So you'll be just as disappointed. Yeah. I think the only thing they have on a clip there is like a 30 second clip where it says like, did anybody like refuse to take the Canadian destroyer? And I said, yeah, CM Punk. I told the story about that and they were like, Oh, okay. And that was newsworthy, I guess. And I'm like, okay. It blows well, my mind. What gets, what people. And by the way, uh, I, I even hate to say it this late in the podcast, but if you are a writer and you've, and you've listened to the podcast and you've written a single word about this, thank you. <laughs> Those articles are phenomenal. I, we get a, and here's another thing. Anytime someone writes something about the show, we turn into 12 year olds. Like, did you see who picked us up? Did you see who wrote about that fightful? And we're, we are sharing it within the group. Like we've never done this before. I mean, Petey and I, we would make news on a regular basis on the first version of, you know, wrestling perspective 1.0. And, you know, here we are now doing this all over again, thinking that kind of, even though we have a stacked roster of people, I feel like sometimes uh, we're the podcast time is forgotten. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I guess you could put it that way. But, um, well, let, let's move on to our, I guess, most recent uh, acquisition you know, addition. Yeah, addition to the, the roster. We'll call this a roster, I guess, because we have so many people, <laughs> so many guys. Yes, it, it's a Lars Fredrickson from Rancid, who I grew up on Rancid. Rancid was one of my favorite bands growing up. Uh, one of my buddies, uh, Scott Hearn, who passed away many years ago, I remember he bring he went out, and this was when CDs were like 20 bucks a pop. Mm. He went out and bought Out Comes the Wolves. Phenomenal CD. Always will be one of my favorites. I, I actually had DM'd him back when you and I were doing the show for him to come on as a guest. And he said yes. And then you quit, and I just kind of let that go by the wayside. And I reached out to him at the back end of the wrestling with sports. I'm like, well, he's a sports fan. He likes wrestling. I'll invite him on. And kind of like Darren did. And we didn't even talk about how Darren actually became part of the show. But it was kind of the same story where we had Darren on as a guest. And it was so fun and so fluent. Darren calls me afterwards and says, I want to do this with you more. I want to be part of this team. And you you don't say no. <laughs> you, you know, when Darren McCarty says, uh, this is a podcast I want to start doing, you go, all right, let me make this happen then. And that's kind of in, in, in opposite because I begged and begged and begged Dimitri. And Dimitri, I know I, a little bit of me broke up uh, Jason's heart once. And I love Jason, but so question asked out of all the co-hosts I have before you came on, Pete, which co-host would I most likely go to dinner with and why? And I said, it, it's it's Dimitri Young because I just I love Dimitri Young. He is if I could have a dad, it would be Dimitri Young. By the way, I do have a dad who's still alive, but he's not Dimitri Young. But um, so. So when Darren McCarty says, I want to be part of the show, you geek out by yourself. It's like, what? And I think I even texted you like, dude, you need to come back. Darren McCarty is part of the show. And I'd still, I mean, I, you know, you already had me sold on it, right? I mean, like, like before you, you added anybody, I'm like, I'm going to come back. Just wait, all right? Like, I have to come back on my terms and stuff. Um, terms, really? Yeah. I, hey, or else I'm not going to want to do it. I'm just going to be going through the motions instead of having my heart into it like I do now. I'm still okay with that at that point, yeah. by the way. I would um, rather have half ass PD than no PD. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to Lars, okay? I mean, I'm sure, you, you know, like in probably in high school, you were listening to Rancid and stuff like that. And really? yes. Yeah. And I mean, and just like, I mean, I still listen. Um, to you know um old firm casuals when i work out and stuff like that just you know one of his side projects and stuff just you know a great musician uh like you could see the guitars in the background and stuff like that i mean if it wasn't for guys like lars i would have never picked up the guitar i mean he was part of that big movement when i was in high school like i'm playing you know time bomb and ruby soho and like all those other songs i'm playing them on the guitar right so salvation yeah so, 
uh, you know, just to have Ran- uh, Lars from Rancid uh, on on our as a, as a co-host. I mean, that's really? that's really surreal. Like, I wouldn't think that would ever happen in life at all. But again, the common denominator is wrestling. I mean, we're I was a wrestling fan before I became a wrestler, um, and we just grow up loving wrestling. It's like we're all like the the best way to put it is you know, you portray a wrestler on TV as like a superhero, right? And that, that's what we're supposed to be larger than life superheroes and, you know, that kind of thing. And when, when I like, when you're watching Hulk Hogan in the Hulk Hogan era, I'm like, he was the superhero. Just like when we watch the Avengers now, you know, with like the, the Iron Man and the incredible, Hulk, like all, all that kind of stuff like they're, they're superheroes. So I fell in love with that. And I think, you know, that that's how we all came together. We are all just fans of wrestling and we just want to talk about it. And, you know, wrestling obviously is not real life. So yeah. Right. So, I mean, we go, we do our real life stuff, our adult stuff, our, our bill stuff, all that kind of stuff. And then what do we get to do at the end of the day? We all get to come together and talk about this, you know, fantasy world and all that kind of stuff. It's almost like we're Dungeons and Dragon geeks, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just wrestling, you know. And and there's so many podcasts out there, and and people do it with other topics and stuff. But we're the wrestling ones, and we're fortunate enough to be able to talk about it on a platform for other people to listen to. That's that's blows my mind, and I love it. Lars has quickly become one of my really good friends. I talk to him on a daily basis and kind of like Dimitri and Jason and D Mac and you, I go, what are we, what are these guys doing talking to me? Like what the hell? So, so to have him part of the show is phenomenal because he brings this amazing business sense to the show. His wrestling knowledge is second to none to Dimitri's. And I I like to think I know a lot about wrestling, but Dimitri and Lars, I think truly, and I, I'm not saying this to put them over, I think they know more than I do. And it's awesome to have those kind of like old school, like Darren will even admit it is Darren loves that attitude era wrestling. And, and even now he's an AEW and impact guy still loves WWE. I think that he, he's tries to catch up on the old AWA NWA stuff, mid South and all that stuff. So when we suggest something, he goes and watches it, but those two guys in Lars and, and Dimitri to, to listen to their knowledge it, it, it blows me away, and it's hard to impress me when it comes to talking wrestling knowledge. Not that I'm the smartest guy in the room or anything. No, they, they definitely have uh, a lot of knowledge. I mean, when they ask questions and stuff, they put a – and this is for everybody, not just the major and large, but they put a lot of thought into these questions, things that they're really wondering just to kind of broaden their knowledge. It's almost like we have a guest on the show – Right. And we feel like, okay, he, he knows more about wrestling than, than we do. And we want to pick his brain. You know, that's what we should have named the podcast. Like brain pickers, brain pickers. That that's horrible. Remember we (laughs) wanted to name it like curtain jerkers at one point. There was a curtain jerker podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what a curtain jerker is? I think I had to explain it to you. Yeah. It's like the first opening match. Yeah. Cause you're, 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 you're behind the curtain and you're the first opening match called the curtain jerker. Um, but yeah, there was already a podcast for that. I wonder if they're still around. Curtain Jerkers, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, comment below. Yep. Yeah, hi, free promotion. Um, but yeah, so to to have this podcast where each one of us has been to the top of our own industries it is phenomenal. It's it's unheard of in a podcast world. And I won't say who it is, but we I I want to say the majority of our guests, but even like re- one of the most recent guests we have, and I won't say which one, we stop and and he he really said, I truly had fun doing this. Like I hate doing wrestling podcasts because they ask me the dumbest questions, but 
and I'm putting us over, by the way, on this. He goes, you guys, you know, had to have asked me really thoughtful and thought out questions, and I appreciate that. So thank you. And when you hear a wrestler say that, a guy that, you know, gets asked a million times a day to do a million different things, and he took a second out, and he didn't have to say it. And not all wrestlers, you know, leave the podcast saying, I had fun, this was great. Most do. Some are like, all right, I'm out, peace, see ya. Mm-hmm. And they go, and that's fine. But when the wrestler takes a second and goes, man, that was great. I loved the questions. I had fun. I can't wait to do this again. That right there is amazing. Yeah, and if uh, so if I have to give advice to any other – you know, uh, podcasters out there or anybody listening and you're starting your own podcast show, there are certain questions that you probably shouldn't ask. Not that they're like forbidden questions or whatever, but it's like, all right, so uh, who, uh, who, who trained you? It's like, okay, well, Wikipedia, you know what I mean? Like people know, like, how about like, I don't know. I disagree uh, with that question. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, cause I'm just going to the beginning think- of my career and stuff. But I think they, one question you probably should have said as a good example is if they're an AEW or Impact is when you go into WWE. Oh, that's a that's a ridiculous question. There there is some like there's just some very generic questions, you know, like uh like the who trained you. Yeah, people want to know who trained you, but they want to know more like tell me about the training. Wait, that, tell and me that's you asked MJF who trained them. What's that? You asked MJF who trained them. I didn't ask him. He just gave that answer out i did not ask who, who oh, trained you, you kind of you asked about his first match yes because that's pretty interesting to me like i remember my first live event i ever went to and i i'm pretty sure it was like a wwe like house show or something like that and then i remember the first time i was ever in the business uh at an independent show like actually behind the curtain i did security so i kind of wanted to know if like he had a similar experiences i did and, and and he did like but except for his first wrestling match was against uh haku but so i mean like that's that's way different um what chris saban no my first match was against a guy named gutter go okay yeah uh, that was my first match and i remember for my retirement match uh i asked the uh, dba who ran xicw i said hey for my last match i either want to wrestle gutter or saban and then he chose for me. He said Saban. Mm. But I would have just awesome, like after like 14 years, if I just came full circle and wrestled the same guy that was my first match. Not that the match would be better than me and Saban, but I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if anybody could say they've done that before. And then and then you retired and came out of retirement. And retired yeah. And came back out. You're like the Brett Favre of wrestling. You want to know who my first match back was out of retirement? Chris Saban? Nope. Uh, it was in XICW, uh, same place that I had my retirement match, and I, it was kind of like a surprise because I just wanted to. Was I know. there with you? Uh, I wrestled Zach Gowan. No, I don't think I was there. Yeah, I, I just I drove up there. You know, it was like the day before. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I'm working for Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. Can I? I just want to dust off some ring dust. You know, I think I was in the ring like two or three times just practicing with like jake something and like uh who uh jake uh, uh, cousin jake jake something what's his last name you can't remember his last name I, something that's a horrible bit i'm out uh <laughs> who's on first yeah well, what who's on second what, what sense um so I, I did some rolling around and i just wanted to match and, and zach you know spoiler alert has one leg so he's not doing a lot of running of the ropes and stuff like that so the match is is different than a regular wrestling match because yeah you got to work around like how zach would do a wrestling match right i can't whip him off the ropes and not give him, a base yeah well yeah exactly well and he's top heavy too obviously so the canadian destroyer is done a little bit different a lot of things are done differently um and like things he can and can't do in the ring uh so there was that i knew i wasn't going to get blown up so and i, I didn't and then I went and, uh, you know, what, what my, my next match back was for Tommy Dreamer House of Hardcore. And get this. I wrestled Alex Reynolds from uh, oh, yeah. Dark Order. And his manager was MJF. Full, full circle. Full circle. There it is. So uh, that's where that, we're at. That's, that's awesome. So 
but questions yeah i mean that's why i wanted those those questions like because not like who's your favorite wrestler well yeah that that, that, yeah don't ask the wrestlers that because they don't give a darn Uh, but hey we should ask mjf that because he would have said i'm my i'm my favorite wrestler (laughs) me by the way phenomenal i did get some people that text me and asked me if i was mad that i couldn't interview him and uh truth be told I think that was perfect. It was a perfect way I could sit back and enjoy it. Uh, you know, because as a, here's the thing as the host, I sometimes don't get to actually listen to what they're saying. I'm thinking ahead to my next question or I'm trying to figure out which way we should steer the interview. What how's it going? So it's a little, you know, I don't get to actually hear it. And, and I do go back and listen to the interviews later. So to be able to kind of sit back and be in that moment and enjoy it was phenomenal and listen to the guys laugh and have fun. And, you know, MJF is MJF. That's what you see on Twitter is what you get in person. So that was a that was a great interview. And before we get to the kind of the end of this, Pete, let me ask you, coming back, what has been your favorite interview so far? Oh man, uh, that one was the most that we just did. MJF was, was, uh, different, I guess you could say it's just, you know, like you don't get too many in character characters. No, I mean, and just to get uh, roasted like big time, uh, that was, cr- I, you know, that's, I don't know. I, I liked when we did, uh, like uh, on our other podcast, I liked when we did like uncle Jeff, you okay. know, he's, yeah. he- is he with WWE still? Yep. Uh-huh. Um, I liked what that we did. Uh, you know, like when we did the Young Bucks, uh, that was a fun one. Even like you know, like Frank Kazarian, uh, Killer you Cross. Need, you need to get Kazarian back on. Yeah. Even when yeah. we did like Eli and and uh, we did a bunch with Cross. Like we we had man, we it's we had a lot fun. of them. It's yeah. fun just talking to these guys, and that's my favorite part of of doing this podcast is to be able to just talk to people that would normally not talk to me yeah and, and, and you know you know which one i really like and we need to get him back on is Ooh. scott demore oh scott demore uh you know <laughs> i remember we we interviewed him in person in uh hot room in windsor yep and you know he he was he doesn't do a lot of interviews but you know obviously we, we mean a lot to him, so. Uh, yeah. Well, you and, mean a lot to him. I'm still the tag along guy. Oh come on, man! It's you okay. mean a lot to him too, um, especially when when Scott ever says like you know after the interview and stuff, he's like, "What what what what's Dennis's background again?" Even though I told him in the past, it doesn't register until he's like, "Ooh, that guy, he's pretty good." What what's his background again? And I have to tell him all your you know. Your yeah. credentials and stuff and then Which nobody knows about by the way yeah well i told him before i well, mean it's yeah. not a, but that, and then he has to hear you and he's like oh i'm like okay he, he th- this guy's good okay what what and that's when you know like okay scott respects you what one day and it, it'll never happen and and i understand it but i would love to just one day do a podcast where we talk about how the interviews went when we turned the cameras off or before we started because there were just so many amazing moments with some of these guys that are candid and they drop their guard down and they're allowed to be a fan of somebody else or allowed to go holy cow i can't believe i'm talking to x y and z and those are the moments for me, especially afterwards where, you know, uh, one of the guys will be like, hey, can you slip my number to this guy? Because I would love to talk to him more. Or I'd love to be friends. And, you know, D-Mac and uh, let's Gallows have become very close friends. There have been a, a bunch of friendships forged between wrestlers and some of these guys that I, I kind of sit back and take a little bit of pride going, hey, we kind of made that happen. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a big network, and we're all, uh, yeah, a, a lot of yeah, you, you know what I'm saying, Dennis. So it's, it's a lot um, of inside stuff that we'll never be able to talk about. That one yeah. day I would love to, but I know we'll never be able to come out. We'll do a real shoot video uh, <laughs> when we like retire the podcast shoot video. 
the the I think the Scott Demore story would be super interesting. Which that's I don't even know if you remember. Do you remember the story he told when we hit stop? Nope. Uh, that's his. We're not going to tell it now, but nope, that's as far as I'm going. Uh, All right. I was. I was priv- and then me. I mean, listen, uh, people. By the way, I get asked a lot of times. You know, you just hit record or. You know, even even once in one of the text words, I had to say, guys, I know that you've done this, but let me tell you, I've done X, Y, and Z myself. You know, I've been a syndicated radio host all over the United States. I've done ESPN Fantasy Football, Fox Sports, I, I, Armed Forces Radio. I've done all kinds of stuff. I got burnt out of doing fantasy football, and I still kind of play it to this day, not as much as I used to. And we got PD and I... We met many years before, and our friendship didn't quite click, but we were uh, acquaintances. Yep. And then one day out of the blue, I get a text from him going, hey, do you want to go to a Raw show? And I think I was probably like number nine on your list of people to ask, but you asked me. Well, I had nine tickets, so. Well, you... (laughs) Thanks to Jimmy Jacobs back when he worked there. He was like, yeah, you want, you want tickets? Sure. We're just trying to get, hey, put, make sure you put as many butts in the seats as you can. We were on the other side of the camera. They were like friends and family tickets. Oh, yeah. yeah. I One day I want to sit hard camera. That is one of my goals is sit front row hard camera at a show, by the way. Okay. If you we'll make taking, it happen. If you're taking notes on what to get me for Christmas or my birthday in okay. November. Um, but I got burnt out. Yes, go ahead. Write that down. Nice. Got it. Um, I got burnt out and, and just stopped doing it. And I, you had reached out to me about going to the show. We went down to my old office downtown mm-hmm. and that's kind of where I really first put the, the hard pitch on you. Right. Yeah. Cause you had a nice, uh, setup in your office, uh, like podcasts and all that kind of stuff. Great view at ooh, yeah. really good. And, uh, yeah, I mean we we had some uh, we had some drinks at the event and we just hit it off and then we became rest this history. Yeah. yeah, and so because of that, h- here we are. And uh, you know, there's a lot of things in motion with the show that we can't talk about, and there may be some changes. There may not be not personnel changes, but just changes. Uh, some of that is a bit over our heads as we go forward, and you trust us, you guys will be the first to be part of it, and we will make sure we'll do our best to still keep this the show. But, you know, things change, and that's that's a, maybe a teaser. I don't know, but we love doing this for you, the fans, and we wanted to spend a few minutes just to really say thank you. And, you know... Uh, I kind of give a recap of how we got to this point, why how we started and got to this point. So uh, you're all caught up now. Yeah. Um, and Ooh. now if you listen to this, this show, uh, you're all caught up. And then now you can be a part of the, you know, the, the future history going forward. Go back, by the way, go back and listen to some of the past interviews. They're phenomenal. And here's the are, thing. are all the interviews on our channel. Yep, they're on the YouTube channel, and you can go back to – and if you don't watch it on YouTube, you can go listen to it on any and all podcasts, major podcast platforms. Just go to look up Wrestling Perspective Podcast, and you'll find us there. Uh, At WP underscore pod on Twitter. I think it's uh, WP Podcast on Instagram. I'm still learning Instagram. But right now we're really trying to push the – the YouTube page. Uh, we don't, like I said, we don't do a lot of promoting. We probably should with, with how some of the guests we have, but you know, we're just here to talk wrestling and yeah, hopefully you guys will find us. And the one thing we say is we're not ever going to really ask you guys for money. We're not going to have, I mean, maybe one day down the road, we may do a Patreon and make it worth it where you guys get to come on and hang out with us. But right now, that's something we don't want to do, especially during a pandemic, is ask people who are scraping by for money. And any podcast that's trying to hawk something right now, shame on you. Shame. I, I, and I truly believe that. But shame hey, on you. That's, uh, people could do whatever they want. If, if, they, need to, if they need to have money, hey, everybody's got to pay their bills. But, um, yeah, uh, we, we won't ask you for a dime. That's all, that's all we're saying. 
but we'll, you can do whatever you want everybody else listening but we're not going to ask you for a dime but what we will ask you for is support go out and tell your friends uh post it on whatever message boards or threads you're part of on your facebook page and twitter retweet us that's the only thing we really ask is we don't grow unless you tell somebody and when you tell someone they tell someone and that's really how we grow and to us that's what we will ask from you yeah uh, that's it that's i mean that, that, that's that's basically what it is it takes like takes nothing on your phone retweet to whatever subscribe and then you know obviously we also want you to listen, right? I mean, it's, it's, if we got no listeners. If we have a million subscribers, but nobody listens, I mean, what do we, I, I also enjoy it because we're all still talking wrestling with each other and we get to hang out once, twice a week or whatever the case may be. But that's it, Dennis. And yeah, that's, all, that's all we got right now. You're all caught up. You're all caught up. Wrestling perspective, PD Williams, Lars Fredrickson, Darren McCarty, uh, Jason Kendall. And Dimitri Young, as, as MJF said, it's a novel idea of having a podcast with nine people who talk over each other. Yeah, that's, that's and, great. And not and not every week are we on it. Basically, we do it by who is around and free to record or do something. And so it, it's a hodgepodge some night. So, but thank you. Really, thank you if you're new for giving us a shot. We know there's a million podcasts out there that you want to listen to. Thank you if you follow us over. I, I know that we've have a you and I we've had a very tight fan base and we've had people that you know have followed us everywhere we've gone and whatever we've done and it's really you know one guy out there that I I will give a personal shout out to and we're I and we will try to do more of this like I said if you give us a review on iTunes five stars and leave a comment we'll read your comment on the air make it you know leave your name but uh listen graham has been a loyal listener from day one he always tweets us he he loves everything we do he's he's the guy who has his uh his i think seven-year-old son does a podcast mm -hmm. you're you you'll have to do his podcast pete very yeah. i was a guest on it it's phenomenal the kid is amazing but I don't think he's seven anymore. I think he's like nine, maybe, maybe. sixteen. I don't know. Yeah, he's always going to be seven to us. Uh, yeah, that's that's the last time we. <laughs> he's twenty two like, now. Jeez, he's wrestling. Holy yeah. cow! We we just had him on as a guest, but we you know this is one of those guys that has always retweeted us, always taken a moment, and I think we do owe an autograph to, and it it's it's coming one day. Uh, not tomorrow. Um, but, but guys like Graham and I, listen, and if you are a supporter out there and I did not just mention you because I only mentioned one and obviously we have more than one yeah. email us, text us, do whatever, get a hold of us. And we will mention you because that's how thankful we are that you guys have listened. And, uh, you know, I never in a million years would I have thought that, uh, you and I teaming up to do a podcast would end up with what is it five other superstars talking wrestling on uh, several times a week yeah uh, i i never thought i would even bump into any of these guys in my entire life so um really surreal um and you know we couldn't have done it without uh you know the the listeners and the and the viewers so thank you so much everybody Yes, and look forward to many more shows. Uh, as I said, you know, we're going to kind of start to slowly transition away from guests. Maybe we'll have one guest a week or so, but we really want to start highlighting our thoughts and our interests in and our input on some of the topics going on in wrestling. And, you know, the last month or so, we really went guest heavy to just kind of kickstart, you know, this new feed and everything we have going on. But uh, thank you guys for listening. And with that, we're just going to say good night and uh, enjoy whatever because we'll be back with uh, the – was it the Butchers coming up next is our next interview. Whew, that's going to be a good one. I, I cannot wait. And then um, I don't think we have anybody booked after that, but you never know. Who's we we got a couple in mind, but uh, yeah. yeah. So thank you guys one, one last time from all of us, every single one of us. 
And PD and I just wanted to keep this intimate between the two of us to thank you guys. But uh, the rest of the guys would, would definitely say thank you. They've said that many, many, many times. But thank you for all the support you've given us over the years and over the last couple months while we rebooted the wrestling perspective. And you guys mean the world to us. Say bye, Pete. Bye, Pete.